Welcome to Robot Studio Tutorials. In today's session, we'll explore the Collision Avoidance feature. The Collision Avoidance feature helps the robot operate safely by keeping track of its surroundings and stopping it if there's a risk of bumping into something. It can also take into account nearby fixed objects. This is especially helpful in setups where the robot relies on cameras or sensors to detect objects that may appear during its work. Note that collision avoidance is not a personal safety feature and does not replace safe move. Collision avoidance requires the RobotWare option collision detection for RobotWare 6 and requires collision avoidance option for RobotWare 7. Collision avoidance is active by default. The state of the collision model in the controller can be shown in the 3D graphics. RobotWare contains built-in collision models for the supported robots. When show prediction collision in graphics is active, the collision model will be displayed when a collision is predicted. In a multi-move system such as this, collisions between the robots are automatically predicted. The execution stops before the collision occurs and a message is added to the event log. The colliding parts are marked red in the graphics. We jog the small robot out of the way to avoid the collision. When we run the program again, it executes without error. But we would also like to avoid collision between the weld gun and the cabinet. External equipment must be configured manually. To do this, select Configure from the Collision Avoidance menu. The window shows a list of objects, object pairs, and a 3D view of the Collision Avoidance model. All parts of the robots are automatically added. To add other equipment, click Add. All objects in the Robot Studio Station are listed. Select the weld gun. The name of the object must be a valid rapid identifier. The collision model uses a simplified geometry that consists of convex hulls. By default, a single hull is created. If the geometry is too coarse, it can be subdivided by planes into multiple hulls. The best plane can be selected automatically. Click Generate Hull to update the geometry. The Position tab specifies the placement and attachment of the object. The attachment properties are filled in automatically because the weld gun is attached to the robot in the Robot Studio Station. Click OK to create the object. Next, add the controller cabinet. Change the name to a valid rapid identifier. We can also see other options like override safety distance. Enable it to override the preset safety distance. Next is activation signal. Each collision object can be assigned an activation signal that determines whether the object is active. This feature is particularly useful when modeling scenarios involving multiple tools where only one tool should be active at any given time. It also helps in representing optional components within a robot cell such as pallets or other movable items. The activation signal must be linked to a digital input. Next is Stop Active Signal. Non-moving collision objects can be configured with a Stop Active Signal, which controls whether the object's stop functionality is enabled. When the signal is inactive, the robot will not stop upon entering or contacting the associated zone or object. This signal must be connected to a digital input. Next is Trigger Signal. A non-moving collision object can be configured with a trigger signal to detect which robots are in contact with it. The signal value represents a bit pattern, where bit K is high if robot K is touching the object. Trigger signals support safe workspace sharing among multiple robots and offer flexible timing configurations. In multi-move systems, the signal must map to a group signal, otherwise it can be a digital output. We see that collision pairs are automatically created between all moving objects. Click Upload to Controller to commit the changes to the controller.
When we run the program again, a collision between the weld gun and the cabinet is predicted and the execution stops. Let us now walk through an example demonstrating the configuration of the activation and stop active digital signals. In this scenario, we will apply the configuration to the IRC5 dual cabinet. Begin by opening the properties window. Select the appropriate digital input for the activation signal. Similarly, choose the digital input for the stop active signal. Click OK to confirm the settings and upload the configuration to the controller. With the configuration in place, we can now run a simulation. At this stage, no collision is detected between the weld gun and the controller cabinet. Next, we will simulate the behavior of the digital signals. Set the activation signal to true. This indicates that the object is now active. Run the simulation again. As before, no collision is predicted. This is expected as the stop active signal has not yet been set. Now, set the stop active signal to true, which activates the stop functionality of the object. Upon running the simulation once more, a collision is detected and the robot halts as intended. If we want to ignore predicted collisions between two objects, we can edit the object pair. Locate the pair in the list and click Properties. Select Exclude from Collision Check and click OK. Upload the changes to the controller. When we run the program again, no collision is predicted. Collision avoidance can also be configured graphically for a real or virtual controller. Connect to the controller on the network. Launch online monitor. The same functions for viewing the collision model are available as for a virtual controller. Let us re-enable collision prediction between the weld gun and the cabinet. Select Configure from the Collision Avoidance menu. Locate the object pair and deselect Exclude from Collision Check. Commit the changes to the controller. In this case, we must restart the controller to apply the changes. Restart the controller. When the program is run, a collision is predicted and the execution stops. The collision model is shown in online monitor and an event log message is generated. And that's it. Your robot is now ready to safely avoid collisions and keep things running smoothly. Thank you for your time and please subscribe for more tutorials like this.